I have decided to switch game engines and create a first person shooter in Unreal. So you have probably heard Unity decided to put out a terrible new pricing model that makes absolutely no sense and could potentially bankrupt developers. Now a couple days ago they actually have reverted these changes, but I think it's still a good time to learn a new game engine. Now after I downloaded Unreal I opened an empty project and I was about to start creating a player then creating the movement and creating a jump and creating a test environment. But then I realized this is where Unreal is different from Unity. You don't have to create everything from scratch, the systems have already been built. So instead of reinventing the wheel, I created a new project with a first person template. I started by importing some models from my current project to see what they would look like with Unreal's lighting and post processing. Then I got the first person idle animation working and I parented the scar to the hand bone. After this I was still quite lost in the engine so I did the first hour in Unreal video by Epic Games and I watched a couple other videos showing the basics of the Unreal Engine. And I also found this page outlining the differences between Unity and Unreal, which was very useful, like a game object is an actor and a blueprint is a prefab. Now in the first person startup project, you start with a gun that is kind of like a cannon that shoots some sort of bouncy ball, and I like this idea. So I decided to carry on with this theme and I created a grenade launcher. So I opened up Blender and I created a toony like grenade launcher using the subdivision modifier. And we have Nanite, right? So we don't need to worry about that fantasy count, right? Honestly, I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. Now, I am using FBS animations for my other projects, so I don't have to recreate all the animations again. So I imported them into Unreal, and after this, I got the grenade launcher into Unreal, and I noticed that the animations don't really fit the gun. And to fix this in Unity, I created a one bone IK constraint so I could position the left hand to more grip the gun. But after some research, I found out Unreal already has a two bone IK constraint that you can just plug into the animator state machine. Next to actually fire the projectile, first I went into Blender and I created a grenade shell. Then I followed some tutorials on shooting projectiles which was very basic. All I had to do was create a new blueprint, attach the grenade shell mesh, added a projectile class and then I just spawned it from a point in front of the gun. Then I found this free asset pack with particle effects, found the muzzle flash I liked and edited it to make it a bit quicker and remove some of the effects that didn't match. And then just played the muzzle flash on mouse click and an explosion effect when the projectile hit something. Now one of the easiest ways to improve game feel is camera shakes and Unreal has a great and easy system of implementing this. In my opinion way better than Unity's Cinemachine camera shakes. So I created a small shake for on fire which is mainly just rotation on the x axis and a large shake for the explosion which is rotation on all axes. Wait! Please subscribe guys, me and my brother just separated our channels and 20 subscribers is looking pretty sad. After this I set up a one dimensional blend space to blend the animations between idle and walk. Then I created an animation state machine to control the animations for walking and jumping, which is the same as an animator in Unity. I also created an animation montage for the gunfire, which is like setting a trigger in Unity. Now we need something to actually shoot, so unoriginally I created a zombie in Blender. Not only is a zombie easy to create because the model can be ugly and it doesn't matter, but he's logically easy to implement. All he does is follow the player if he's in range, and then attack when he's close enough. And Unreal has a great AI system to implement this. So after watching a couple tutorials again, I added an F mesh boundary to the scene which outlined all the places the zombie could walk and chase the player. I created a new blueprint, I added the zombie mesh, I attached the AI class and I created some basic logic using blueprints to make the AI follow and attack the player when in range. Oh and yes, for the zombie animations I was lazy and I used Mixamo for the idle, run and attack animations. Then I added some logic so when the zombie is hit, it goes on fire for a couple of seconds, then turns to a ragdoll. Because who doesn't love ragdolls? Area damage. I actually had a tough time trying to create the blueprint logic because it would hit the player first when it was initially shot. So I added some logic to check if the actor it was colliding with was the player. And this worked, it would only explode if it hit the zombie, but then it wouldn't explode when it hit the ground or a static object, and since my blueprint knowledge is very limited, I just added a timer for it to explode after 2 seconds if it hadn't collided with the zombie first. And after playing around with it, I think it turned out alright. Additionally, I added radial force. 
So on explosion, any object simulating physics gets pushed back. And with this feature, I unintentionally created rocket jumping, which is very cool. Lastly, I added some audio for the launch of fire, the grenade hitting the ground, and the explosion. Now for the environment. For this game, I just wanted to create an island with a couple trees and rocks. And after watching a couple tutorials, I was able to do just that. I started by creating a terrain and shaping it to my liking. I then added Unreal's ocean body so it looked like you're on an island. Then using an asset pack, I was able to place some trees and rocks throughout the map. I did start with these cartoon low poly style trees, but then I changed it to something more realistic. Now looking at this, you can really see how superior Unreal's lighting and post-processing is to Unity's. Now the last thing I did was scatter the zombie AI throughout the map. Now initially they wouldn't chase the player, but after going through some forms, I found a box in the project settings that I just needed to tick. So after a week of creating a game in Unreal, there was still so much I have to learn, like I haven't even touched C++ yet, but I really do like the game engine, and how pretty your game looks straight out of the box. And it's crazy, but it even feels faster than Unity, especially with Unity's reload time. But hey, if you want to see part 2, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching guys, peace.